Hey, it's T. I'm one of the geniuses at Ask Zyla. So let's just get started with the live session. So these are questions that students have been sending in and questions we see commonly throughout the week. So once again, if you have any questions that you want us to solve, send us a message. We'll be happy to help you out. So the first couple of questions are just elementary math questions. We're dealing with translations. Uh, of coordinates, so they're told translate ABC three units to the left, two units up. So we need to figure out what ABC is. So A is going to be one and negative one. B is going to be four and zero, and C is going to be three and negative four. Right? They're asking us to trans translate these uh, coordinates three units to the left, two units up. So if we're translating them. 3 units to the left, we have to subtract 3 from the x coordinates, right? So if a is 1 and negative 1, we're subtracting 3 from 1. So 1 minus 3 end up as negative 2. And 2 units up, so I'm adding 2 to all the y coordinates. So minus 1 plus 2 ends up as just 1. Right? We're going to do the same operations for b and c. So we have 4 and 0. We have 3 and negative 4. Right, so minus 3 for the x, I have 1, minus 3 for the x over here, I have 0, and 2 units up, I'm adding 2 for the y's, I have plus 2 and minus 2. Okay, so the next question is a very similar question. We asked to plot a parallelogram which has coordinates a, b, c, and d. Right. So A is told to be negative 5 and 3, so it's over here. B is 0 and 2. 0 and 2 is over here, so this is A, this is B. And C is 1, negative 1. 1, negative 1. And D is negative 4 and 0, so negative 4 and 0. Right. So it's a parallelogram, so I'm just going to connect the dots. So the second part of the question is telling us to translate this parallelogram three units to the right and four units down. Right. So we're transforming all these points, A, B, C, D, three units to the right, four units down. Right. So if A is negative five and three, that means I'm going to subtract, um, I'm going to add three to the x value. Right and it is 3, so if I want to go down by 4, I'm going to subtract 4 from the y value, right? So I end up with negative 2 and negative 1 as my co new coordinate for my a point. So negative 2, negative 1 ends up being here, right? I'll use a different color for this. So this is going to be the new a, right? b, I'm going to do the same thing, right? 3 to the right, so I have 1, 2, 3, 4 units down, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is my new B value. Right. Do the same for D. D, 3 units to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4 units down, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's D, C, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. Right. So this is my C. Then I can just connect the dots. So this is my transformed parallelogram, right? So that whenever they ask me to transform or translate it three units to the right, I need to add three or add how many units I'm translating it to the right to my x coordinate. If I'm translating it down by four units, I'm going to subtract four from my y coordinate, right? If I'm translating it left, I need to subtract it. If I'm going up, I need to add to my y. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. So we're dealing with an equation of a plane, so this is a grade 12 calculus and vectors question. So we'll be dealing with question number seven. So they're telling us to find the vector and parametric equation. Give me a second. Yes, yeah, so they're asking me to find the vector and parametric equation uh, of the plane that's parallel to the yz plane and that contains the point A, which is negative one, two, and one. Right. So what we have to do is come up with an equation for the plane. So plane has 
uh, it's usually in the form of, let's say, R is my equation for the plane. It's usually a point plus parametric equation, a parameter, and a second parameter. Let's call it S. So I have one vector, two vector, and one point. So all this together combines to make one equation for a plane. Right? So what are the two equations I can, two vectors I can get to describe this plane? We know it's par parallel to the yz plane. Right? So one vector could possibly be 0, 1, and 0. Right? The other vector could be 0, 0, and 1. Right? Both of these vectors would be parallel to the yz plane. Right? And as for the point, I'm just going to use the point given to me, A, which is negative 1, 2, and 1. So when I combine these, I get is a negative 1, 2, 1, and plus a parameter t times one of the vectors. So I'll pick this to be 0, 1, 0, plus s, which is the other parameter with the second vector, which is this, 0, 0, 1. Right? There's many different vector equations we can come up we can come up with, but this is just one example. It's the simplest one because I know these are the simplest vectors that are parallel to the yz plane. Okay, so that's how we come up with the plane equation. So. Let's try one of these. So this is a grade 9 map. So we asked to find the perimeter of the triangle given below. Right? So to find the perimeter, we need to find the hypotenuse side. And using the Pythagoras theorem, we know it's going to be a square plus b square is equal to c square. Right? So the c square is my hypotenuse side now. So to find that, I'm just going to do 40 squared plus 9 squared is equal to 8 squared. And then I'm going to square root all of this, which ended up being 1681, to get just the height by itself. Right? And then when I square root that, I should get 41 as my hypotenuse. Right? So they asked me for the perimeter, so I'm going to add 41 plus 40 plus 9. Right? That's going to give me 90 as my perimeter. So let's move on to the next question. So it's a grade 10 uh, math trick question. So from the top of a uh, 229 meter high cliff, the angle of depression of a sailboat on water is 22 degrees. Okay. So let's draw a small diagram to show this. So 229 meters. Okay. The angle of depression of a sailboat on the water is 22. So angle of depression is against the horizontal. So this is going to be 22 degrees. How far to the nearest meter is the boat from the base of the cliff? So we have to find this distance. Right? We know this is a 90 degree angle. So we drew a diagram to illustrate this. So we need to find this distance. Right? Now we need to figure out some angles inside this triangle. Right? If this is a horizontal and this is the horizontal, we know this angle to be 22 degrees. We can also find this angle by doing 90 minus 22. Right? But we're just going to use the 22 and 229. Right? Given that we know a sine cos 10, in reference to this angle, this is going to be my opposite and this is going to be my adjacent. Right? Opposite and adjacent. Now, from sine cos 10, which one has opposite and adjacent? It's going to be tan. So tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. Right? So tan of 22 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is 229 meters, divided by my d value, which I need to find. Right? So I'm going to isolate for my d. One second. Right. So that's 2229 meters over tan of 22 degrees. Right. So this should give me approximately 567 meters. Okay. 
So just to recap what we did, we're told the, from the top of a 229 meter high cliff, there's angle of depression. So the angle of depression is always from the horizontal going towards the bottom. Right, so this is my angle of depression, which is 22. How far to the nearest meter is the boat from the base of the cliff? So the base of the cliff is over here. So I need to find this d distance. Right. So I know if this is a horizontal and this is a horizontal, this angle is going to be the same. Right. So I can find the sides in relation to this angle. So the opposite side is going to be 229. The adjacent side is going to be d. So the only trig ratio that has opposite and adjacent is going to be tan. So I use the tan of 22 is equal to 229 over d, and I isolate for my d. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. So this is a grade 12 calculus vectors question again. So we're dealing with the dot and cross product. So let's rewrite this so that we don't get confused. Dot c. Right? So the cross product is going to give us a vector, and once we figure that out, we'll be doing the dot product of those two vectors. Right? So my first step should be to figure out what the cross product of a and b is. So a cross b. I'm going to rewrite two vectors again. So I have negative 2, 3, 5 as my a. And for my b, I have 4, 0, negative 1. Right? Cross product, remember, we start the second. For my first vector, I do 3, 5, negative 2, 3. Again, start from the second component from my second vector. So I have 0, negative 1, 4, and 0. And then I'm going to do this cross, this cross, this cross. Right. And then subtract. So what I'm doing is 3 times negative 1 minus 5 times 0. That's my x component of my cross product. Okay. And then I'm going to do 5 times 4 minus negative 2 times negative 1. That's the y component. Okay, and then I'm going to do negative 2 times 0 minus 3 times 4, and that's my z component. So x, y, z. Okay, so this evaluates to 3, 22, and negative 12 as the cross product between my vectors a and b. Okay. But we're not done yet because we need to do the cross product and then the dot product with the vector c. Right? So my vector c was, let's see, let's write it here to be 2, negative 2, and 3. Okay? So I have the dot product between 3, 22, negative 12, dot 2, negative 2, and 3. Right? To recap, to get the dot product, I'm going to multiply the x's together, add them with the product of the y's, add them with the product of the z's. So I have 3 times 2 plus 22 times negative 2 plus negative 12 times 3. Right. This evaluates to negative 37. So this is my final answer. Right. This is the product of the cross product of B and A and B and the dot product of C to give me negative 37. It has to be a scalar quantity because I'm getting the dot product as my final operation. <clears throat> okay, so let's move on to the next question. So this question is asking me to calculate the angle between two vectors and illustrate it geometrically. Okay, so we'll just do part A. So vector P, which is 7 and 8. So let's say this is 7, this is 8. This is my P vector. Q is going to be 4 and 3. 4 and 3. Let's say this is my Q vector. Right. So we have to find the angle between these two. So the easy way of doing this is finding the dot product between these two. And, and using the magnitudes of these vectors times the cos theta, which is again another way of finding the dot product. Right. 
So then we'll find the dot product, which is 7, 8, dot 4, 3. Right? And then the magnitudes is going to be square root 7 square plus 8 square, 4 square, that's square root plus 3 square. All this will be multiplied by cos theta. So let me just move this around. Right. Cos theta. So I need to isolate for the cos theta because they're asking me for the angle. So I have cos theta is equal to the dot product on top and the magnitudes on the bottom. So I have 7, 8, dot 4, 3. And the magnitudes evaluate to square root 1, 1, 3 and square root 25. Right. The dot product evaluates to 7 times 4 plus 8 times 3. And the denominator is the product of the square roots, which end up being 2,825. Okay. So all this is equal to the cos of the theta. So I'm going to get that theta is equal to the cos inverse of all this, which simplifies to 52 over square root 2,825. This is going to be roughly 12 degrees. Okay. Let's jump to the next question. So this is a grade 12 uh, functions question. It's dealing with annuities. Okay. So we're doing question 35. So the timeline shown shows an annuity from which semi-annual withdrawals are made for two years. Interest is compounded semi-annually. Question A is asking, what is the annual rate of interest? Justify your answer. Okay. So the annual rate of interest we can see from the equations uh, given here. <clears throat> okay, 1.07, that's what we're going to take it out of. Okay, so the annual rate of interest is 1 minus 1.07, which is 0 0.07. In, in percentages, it's going to be 7%. Right? And this is showing me the time in six month periods. Right? So this interest rate is going to be 7% every six months. So, if I want to get it, so if I want to get it per year, I just multiply the seven percent by two to get me fourteen percent per year. Okay. So part B is asking how many withdrawals will be made in total. Justify your answer. Right. So, how many withdrawals we're making? We made four withdrawals in total. Right. We made one at each of the time points given. So we just need to observe it visually that there's four withdrawals we made. Right. One, two, three, and four. So for part B, I have four withdrawals. Right. Part C is asking calculate the present value of the annuity. Right. So we have to use the present value equation, so let's see like, what that is. So present value is equal to R times 1 minus 1 plus interest minus N. Right. All this is over the interest rate. Okay. My R I can get from what I have left, which is 3,000. Right. My i is my interest rate, which is 7%. N is um, the number of interest periods, so it's going to be 4, right. because it's made for 2 years. So the present value will be 2 years after, so my n will be 4. So I'm going to say r is 3,000, 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.07, right. minus 4. And then all this will be divided by my interest rate, which is 0 0.07. Right. I can plug this into my calculator, and then this will evaluate to 10,161.63. So let's jump to the next question. So 
we are asked to solve the following triangle. So when they say solve the following triangles, meaning we have to find all the sides and all the angles of the triangles, right? So let's label this A. Let's label this A, B, C. So this is side A I have to find, side B I have to find, and angle A I have to find. Right? Angle A is easy to find because I have two of the angles already, so I know the, inter the interior angles of a triangle add up to 180. Right? So I do 180 minus 90 minus 38. Right? So that just ends up being 52 degrees. Right. So for side A, I can use uh, the primary trig ratios. So I have, let's do it with relation to this angle. I have the opposite and I need to find the adjacent. So the only trig ratio that has opposite and adjacent is going to be tan. So I'm going to do tan of 38 degrees is equal to the opposite over adjacent. Right. Opposite is going to be 12, adjacent is going to be my A that I need to find. So my A value would be 12 over 10 of 38 degrees. Okay. So this ends up being approximately 15.3. So I've found A and the side A as well. Okay. This is angle A. This is side A. So then side B I can find by doing the Pythagoras theorem. So I have A squared plus B squared, oops, A squared plus 12 squared is equal to B squared. Right, my A I found to be 15.3. I'm going to replace that. So I have 15.3 squared plus 12 squared. And the square root of this is going to give me B. So this ends up being evaluating to 19.44 as my B, and I've found all the sides and all the angles inside my triangle. So once again, if they ask you to solve a triangle, you have to find all the angles and all the sides. So start by finding the easier ones first. The angle is the easy one because I know all the angles inside are to 180. So do 180 minus 90 minus 38 to give me 52 and then go about using the primary trig ratios or the Pythagoras theorem to solve the sides of the triangle. <clears throat> okay, so let's jump to the next question. So this is a grade 12 calculus and vectors question. So we are told to find two points on the line of um, x is equal to, we have a vector equation, which are 35 units away from point B. Okay. So let's rewrite this vector equation. So I have x is equal to 3, negative 10, 11, plus lambda is my parameter, and this is my vector. So negative 1, negative 4, negative 3. Okay. So if I were to write the parametric equations for this, my x component would be 3 plus lambda times negative 1. Right? So I can simplify this just to say minus lambda. Then my y would be negative 10 plus lambda times negative 4. Right? This can again be simplified to negative 4 lambda. And my z would be 11 minus 3 lambda. I just made that shortcut again. Right? So I have the x, y, compo x, y, z components of the parametric equation. And all of these three points have to, sorry, all of these three equations have to correspond to the point 10, 18, and 32. Okay? They ask me two points on this vector equation that are 35 units away from this point. Okay? So I need to use the distance equation and use this as my x and this as my x to see what the distance between them would be. 
right? And they've told me the distance should be 35. So I'm going to say distance is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared plus z2 minus z1 squared. Right? And I know my distance should be 35. Right? So I'm going to square both sides to get rid of the square root. So I'm going to do 35 squared. This leaves me with x2 minus x1 squared. Right? And now I'm going to replace the x2 and x1 with the either the components on the parameter equation or the point. Right? So I'm going to say these are, this is my point 2 and this is my point 1. Right? So my x2 ends up being 3 minus lambda minus my x1 is going to be 10. Right? So all this is going to be squared plus my y2 would be minus 10 minus 4 lambda minus 18 squared plus 11 minus 3 lambda minus 32 squared. Right? This is the equation that I have to solve. Okay? So I have to expand and simplify the brackets on the right side. So 35 squared evaluates to 1, 2, 2, 5. That is equal to 3 minus lambda minus 10 is negative 7 minus lambda. Right, so I just simplify the brackets and expand them. So when I expand them, I end up with 26 lambda squared plus 364 lambda plus 1274. Okay, this, is, this looks like a quadratic equation, so I'm going to treat it like such. So I'm going to subtract both sides by 1225. This leaves me with 26 lambda squared plus 364 lambda plus 49. Right. So then I'm going to use the quadratic equation b squared minus 4ac over 2a plug the abc values into this and I get my lambda could be negative 13.86 or my lambda could be negative 0.135. Right. So I need to find the point on the line from the vector equation given earlier. So I'm going to plug in lambda is equal to negative 13.86 and I'm going to plug in lambda is equal to negative 0.135 to find two separate points. Right. So my x was ends up being 16.86, my y ends up being 45.44 and my z ends up being 52.6. Right? So this is point 0.1, so it's 16.86, 45.44, and 52.6. This is point number 1. Right? And point number 2, I'm going to substitute negative 0.135 into my permit equations, which gives me 3.135, y is negative 9.46, Z is going to be 11.4. Right? So this is my point 2. Right. <clears throat> so just to recap how we did this, we just reload the vector equation initially and reload, reload the parametric equations. And we said each component is equal to one of the coordinates. That's for my second point. Right? So for my two points on the line, I'm going to say, I'm going to represent those as my parametric equations. Right? So I came up with the distance equation and I substituted the points from as components of my parametric equation and the other point given to us. And I know the distance was 35, so I simplified and found the parameters that can give me the distance of 35. I found two answers by solving like a quadratic equation. And then I substituted those values back into my parametric equations <coughs> to find the x, y, z coordinates from the two points. So let's move on to the next question. So 
This is a grade 12 calculus vectors question. It's asking for the cross product. So find a unit vector that is perpendicular to the following vectors. So anytime they're asking me to find a vector that's perpendicular to two vectors, I have to do the cross product. Right? By definition, the cross product is a vector that is perpendicular to both the vectors given. So if we do A cross B, it's going to give me a vector that's perpendicular to both A and B. Right? So this ends up being 6, negative 2, negative 3, cross 5, 1, negative 4. Right? So we're going to start with negative 2, negative 3, 6, negative 2. That's from vector 1, and I'm going to start from the second component from my second vector. So I have 1, negative 4, 5, and 1. Then I'm going to make the crosses. So the first cross is going to give me the x component, second cross is going to give me the y, third cross is going to give me the z components. Right? So negative 2 times negative 4 minus 1 times negative 3. Y is going to be negative 3 times 5 minus 6 times negative 4. And z is going to be 6 times 1 minus negative 2 times 5. Right. So this evaluates to 11, 9, and 16. We're not done yet because the question is asking us to find a unit vector that's perpendicular. Right? So this is a vector, but it's not a unit vector. So to find a unit vector, so let's call this vector u. Right? We need to do v is equal to, let's say v is the unit vector of u. We need to get u divided by the magnitude of u. Okay. We know the vector u is going to be 11, 9, and 16, divided by the magnitude of u is going to be the square root of 11 squared plus 9 squared plus 16 squared. Okay. This evaluates to just 11 over square root 4, 5, 8, 9 over square root 4, 5, 8, and 16 over square root 4, 5, and 8. This is my unit vector. Right? So anytime you ask to find the unit vector, just get the magnitude and divide it by each component of the vector itself. <clears throat> All right, so that about does it for me today. So just a quick update. The next live will be this Wednesday. So if you have any questions that you want us to work through in the live or if you want some help with them, send us a message. We'll be happy to accommodate as much as we can. So thank you for tuning in. Hope this has been helpful. Hope you guys have a good night. Take care.